Okay, so the fifth segment is called How Can We Waste Less Energy in the Gulf? And I think this is a lot has to do with uh, how do you incentivize people in the UAE? I mean, the UAE is considered one of the, has, has the highest carbon footprint? Uh, yeah, Qatar. Qatar. Per, per capita, Qatar? per capita. Qatar and the yeah, UAE. Per capita, UAE so and Qatar. Qatar. Oh, how do you is it, a, is it a, I mean, how do you do it? You know, prices are subsidized. Uh, there's, there isn't a really a culture of conservation here in the region. How do you change it? It's a very social, you know, kind of, it's, it's difficult. Well, look at the industries that are growing in this part of the world. We've got two of the fastest growing airlines, well, maybe three, maybe four, in the world. You know, it's the aviation industry. The other day, I was actually driving back from Abu Dhabi, having come from the Grand Prix, and on my way to the airport, where there was a huge air show, where everything was backed up, to fly out to Qatar. So, you know, we have very energy-intensive industries. And the funny thing is that, you know, we were talking about inward investments, when we talk about relations with Asia. The Chinese, desperate for energy. They don't actually want to have a normal trading relationship. What they want to do is they want to come here and develop energy intensive industries in the region, in Saudi Arabia, in, in the UAE, the Koreans want to come here, and then export it back to their country. So it's not really a true investment because it's, uh, it's cheaper, you know, you get cheaper feedstock. So I think so long as you have cheap feedstock, the Saudis give industry feedstock, gas feedstock at 75 cents per uh, British thermal unit per million British thermal unit, which is rubbish, you know, 75 cents, so you can just put it, desalination, you know, we talk about this expansion in our, in our population, a huge expat community, where are they going to drink water from? You know, it's got to be desalination, that runs on gas. Um, so we have already very, very energy intensive industries. But the argument is yeah. that uh, we don't have a conservation culture because, you know, electricity and water are very cheap. They're subsidized for some. severely. Yeah. For some, a little bit less. But in general, it's still considered cheaper than a lot of other places in the world. What this does is that it makes you very apathetic to the need to uh, conserve. Yeah. Now, conversely, on the other hand, somebody was, some, I was sitting with, um, some of you might know, Dr. Tisam Al-Kitli, a political scientist from the UAE. And we were talking two days last night. And she was telling me that a, she was reading this in a paper, or she was talking to a political science professor, uh, another professor who was telling her that the equivalent of bread and the Gulf in the context of the other Arab countries, which was the spur of the revolution and the you know, subsidies and all, is electricity and water, where a lot of uh, nationals across the Gulf would really, I'm, I'm not saying they would go to the streets, but I'm saying they would be, their life would become severely more complicated financially if those subsidies were removed. So how do we do it? I think there are just much cleverer ways to go about this, right? I mean, it's just posed as a, as a black or white argument behind very, very cheap... Show me the grid. Yeah, I will. Very, very cheap energy on the one hand, and everybody likes getting cheap energy, but it's wasteful, right? Other hand, prices soar, prices go to what, what a real cost would be, everybody complains, industry runs away, and so on. The middle ground is just be much smarter and say, look, you want people to pay the full cost of their energy use, if certain groups of people are going to struggle, you know, maybe you know, put the poorer in society or certain groups who are going to have a hard time with that, compensate them directly. You're talking about smart subsidies. Smart subsidies. Yeah. Give them a check. You know, just say, fine, I know your electricity bill has gone up. Here's a check that will cover that. So you've still got an incentive to be smart and turn your air conditioning down and close the windows and all this kind of stuff. Buy your light, you know, buy your energy efficient light bulbs. Uh, but equally, financially, you're, you're kind of kept whole. You're still comfortable. You know, we've got super cheap petrol in this country, and most of that is going to the guy with six hummers in the garage, right? It's not going to the poor person who, uh, who, who as you say, is struggling to make ends meet. So it, the, the subsidies, you know, just, uh, they're just not well directed. I mean, that's the case. So it comes you envision to a situation where you walk into a gas station and there's different, uh, different pods depending on the car that you're driving? <laughs> so if you're a well, Mercedes, you go into that one and you pay a lot higher price than the guy in the Toyota. Well, you know, in Europe it kind of works like that. I mean, at least your, your vehicle registration fee depends on the size of the engine of the car. I, I'm not actually a big fan of that. I mean, but but I, I would say make fuel expensive, but give a rebate to people. So, you know, if you're the guy with six Hummers, you don't get six rebates. Yeah, you get one rebate. Okay, fair enough. That, that makes you think again about your consumption. If you're the person with the Toyota Camry struggling to make ends meet, then, you know, fuck it. Then the rebate check probably mean, means something to you. Um, I think if you had to construct a dystopia of energy efficiency, it would look something like the UAE and the other Gulf countries, because for the reasons we've discussed, you've got the perfect storm of a harsh physical environment, uh, 
energy intensive industries being developed, cheap energy, subsidised energy, um, and, and no great sort of movement towards greater energy efficiency. So the question is how do you move away from that? And I agree with Robin that you have to, um, you have to hit people in the pocket. And Robin makes a very important point that part of the reason subsidies um, cling on uh, in, in countries for much longer than they should do is that they favour the rich people and the elites who make the policies because they're the biggest consumers of energy and, and that is a crucial point and, and why you know in Nigeria you know that the, the, there was a long tradition of political dishonesty with sort of these guys getting uh, these politicians getting up and saying oh yes but you cannot take subsidies away from the, the the poor market seller in Lagos he depends on the petrol subsidy and it's like well if he gets this much out of it you get this much so um, uh, you know ultimately that, that was completely completely dishonest um, and I think the the key thing though is that if you take away subsidies, either you have to do something like Robin says to have a um, some kind of direct. It could be a direct distribution, like he says, or you know, one day um, you can do it by the interaction of other parts of the tax system. You know, if an in income tax system was ever introduced, that would be another way to um, make taxation uh, more progressive. But the other thing that you must do is raise prices, but also give people an alternative. But Michel, what is government serious about this? I mean, I'm, I believe in economic incentives. I believe mm. if it gets expensive, then I think they'll get very serious about it very quickly. I think Dubai is getting there. I mean, there's certainly a lot more policy work, a lot more, a lot more attention to it. Not too much concrete yet in terms of what, what you would see just as a you know, person around the city, but definitely the policy is coming. And I think because Dubai has moved, you know, Dubai isn't in the position of Kuwait anymore. Now it's more like Singapore. It's an energy importer that depends on its neighbours for energy and that makes it insecure, it makes energy more expensive. Uh, so, you know, the whole mindset, I think, has to change. And, and at a government level, amongst the people who are responsible, that mindset is, is changing, that's what I see. But, you know, it's, a, it's then a long road before you see that in really concrete things in, in terms of being an inhabitant around the city. Questions on conservation? Um, we'll love you and debate the spend so much money on marketing and it's very artificial from where I see it. Marketing what? Um, everything, marketing uh, their businesses, marketing the city itself. Right. Uh, to position like a Willoughby and Dubai as, uh, as like uh, business centers. Hubs. However, China doesn't do that. China is known for their, um, for what they do for the achievements that they've done. So, from where I see it, I, I, I'd rather where I'd rather Abu Dhabi, you know, invest in solar energy instead of artificial marketing expenses, because they spend millions and billions on, you know, marketing instead of something useful to the country and to the citizens. What does that happen? I think you're right, but I think the reason why we market ourselves and the Chinese don't is because we're expensive and they're cheap. <laughs> 